Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Today we have the honor to have Andrea Santonopoulos with us. Andreas, bienvenido. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. ¿Cómo estás? <laughs> Muy bien. Todo you bien. Uh, well, the first question that I wanted to ask you is um, because people usually ask me uh, for guidance where, regarding uh, when learning the fundamentals, what do you think are the first steps or the topics people should cover in order to when starting educating themselves? In cryptocurrencies in general? In general, or Bitcoin, or yeah, in crypto in general. Um, you know, I think the, the there's a couple of uh, things. Yeah. I think the first and most important idea is this isn't an investment. This isn't just an investment. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people when they're first introduced into cryptocurrencies, the top the first thing is to buy, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's much more powerful to teach people how to earn um, by exchanging their labor, okay. uh, by selling a product or service. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I earned my first uh, crypto was actually by yes. selling something to someone else, um, and I've earned most of my crypto that way, okay. because then it's part of your life and you become part of the economy. From a practical perspective, of course, the best thing you can teach someone is how to use a wallet okay. um, and how to control their own keys by themselves. How to All do right. a backup, mm -hmm. how to store that backup, how to keep it secure, um, how to install a wallet on their phone, which wallet to install. All of that advice is very useful because it's the hardest information to get from strangers. Okay. If you just go and search on Google, you're much more likely to install either a very bad wallet or a dangerous wallet. All right. So security, security would be one of the main topics. Yes, but okay. but practical security. Yes. How do you use this every okay. day? We will cover that in the in the channel then. Yes, very good. Great. So another question is besides the fundamentals about the technology, which other factors do you think people should take into consideration uh, to have macro perspective in this space? What I mean by macro perspective is the following: because usually people focus on price analysis news and maybe a little bit about the fundamentals is there like uh, scalability or the evolution of technology that you think people what are like the key main factors that you think people should analyze each day that are really in, in, in crypto to have macro perspective and make good decisions so I, I think it's important to understand what the principles of open blockchains are and why those principles are important to me the principles of an open blockchain uh, or any open cryptocurrency that's based on an open blockchain is open. What, what does open mean? Open means that anyone can access it yes. from anywhere in the world at any time without the need for proving their identity or signing up for accounts or being uh, approved by someone. Okay. So that's what open. So that means open access. Um, and second, it has to be decentralized. So decentralized means that no one is in control, or at least that control is spread among thousands of people, so that no one can easily seize control of the system. Right? Okay. And that decentralization then gives you the property of neutrality, which means that the system doesn't care if you're Argentinian or American, if you're white or black, Christian or Muslim, tall or short, male or female or not. Any of those things, those things do not matter. Um, so neutrality, that it, the systems are borderless, that they operate across country borders and jurisdictions, that they're not tied to a specific jurisdiction, and that these systems are censorship resistant. Meaning that if you want to do a transaction on an open blockchain, no one can stop you from doing a transaction. In the macro scale, what happens is all of those principles will come under attack at one point or another. And whenever those principles are attacked, it will always be presented as something being done for your benefit. Mm -hmm. So people who are attacking these principles will say, well, we can't have it open because bad people will use it. Or it can't be borderless because we need to protect our national interests. Or it can't be neutral because those people will use it. Right? Mm -hmm. And what they're trying to do is persuade you that your safety and um, that your freedom is in giving them control in order to change these principles. And the answer yeah. is simple: no. <laughs> yeah. 
don't do that. So okay. preserving those principles. So if you have a long-term perspective on open blockchains, it's about guarding those principles, even when they tell you it's not for your own good. Excellent. That is one thing that I have learned from you, and one of the key messages that I keep on telling my audience. Uh, you need one of the first thing you need to understand is why a blockchain is open, and yeah. that is the one of the first steps that need, people need to study. Start with the open blockchain of Bitcoin, and that gives you perspective to analyze other technologies. Correct, yes. And that is uh, also attached to another question that I, I already know the answer, and some of the people already know the answer, but is why um, or how do you think people use this terminology in a wrong way? Why Bitcoin and not just blockchain? Because usually people say, I'm interested in, in I'm not that interested in Bitcoin, but in the technology behind it. Do you want to explain us a little bit about that? So when someone says I'm not interested in Bitcoin but in the technology behind Bitcoin blockchain what they're saying is I want to sound like I am intelligent to know what I'm talking about yes. but I'm not entirely sure what I'm talking about. Exactly. Um, and I, and that's not a bad thing. A lot of a lot of people who come to this and are new they hear these phrases again and again and they'll repeat them without really understanding it to a real depth. So it's a bit like saying, I'm not interested in automobiles, I'm interested in transmissions, the technology behind automobiles. And of course, all automobiles need a transmission to function. Yeah. But the transmission is not the most important, not the most interesting, and, uh, and not the most revolutionary part of an automobile. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and so, Usually that's used because the people who are saying blockchain not Bitcoin what they're saying is also closed blockchain not open blockchain Correct. bordered <laughs> blockchain not borderless controlled blockchain not neutral censored blockchain not censorship resistant what they're trying to do is strip the open borderless neutral censorship resistant decentralized aspects of the blockchain and then say, can we have a blockchain without that? Well, the answer is no. And the reason we can't have a blockchain without that is because without that, it's called a database. Yeah. It's not a blockchain. So therefore, why did you do all of this? Yeah. It's misunderstanding what is the fundamentally um, revolutionary aspect and disruptive aspect of this technology, Correct. which is decentralization. Yes. And to do that, you need not just a blockchain, you also need an open decentralized consensus algorithm. Proof you need robust cryptography, such as proof of work. You need robust cryptography. You need um, a peer-to-peer -peer network to support propagation of information in a way that can't be stopped. All of these things come together to make the magic. Now, it can be not Bitcoin. There are other open blockchains that are interesting. Okay. Bitcoin, I think, is the most important one. But can you mention another one? Uh, you know, it it okay. doesn't it doesn't matter. All right. You have to figure that out for yourselves, right? right I think. Yeah. Um, but I, I think the, the the important thing is, is it open, right? Yeah. So is it open, decentralized, and all of those things? And most of the people who say I'm not interested in Bitcoin, I'm interested in technology behind blockchain, they're rejecting all of the other features. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. And we ha what we have just said, people is key, key to have perspective and understand the focus. Because uh, the other day I was listening to Trace Mayer, he was saying there's so much noise in yeah, the space, so and only a few people are focusing on the right thing, and the, uh, the right thing, and the main purpose of this uh, market is decentralization. Yes. Yes. Okay, so next question, what do you think people ask you more about Bitcoin that they don't? Um, how I can how I can use this in my work. Uh -huh. So everybody's asking me when I should buy, mm. instead of asking me how can I use this in my work or in my life. Yeah, okay. And I'm much more interested in how you use these technologies in your work or your life. And maybe maybe not um, the time. For some people, it's not the time to use it in their work or their life. They don't need it, and that's okay. Um, then it's it's an interesting technology to learn about for educational purposes, um, especially if you're interested in computer science, but more broadly. Um, but um, if you are in an environment, and I think that's especially true of Argentina, mm -hmm. th um, then there's a lot more opportunity to use this as part of your work. If you work on the internet and you do work that is not 
tied to a specific geography. If you work with people in other countries, and you are making transactions, receiving payments or sending payments for your work or for the work of others across borders, then you can use this technology today in your work. I pay my employees and contractors in crypto because it is the most convenient, fastest, most secure way to achieve the goals of my business. I earn crypto as fees because again it's the easiest securest fastest way for me to earn money and so it's it's deeply embedded in how my company works um, and I, I think that gives a different perspective I don't look at it Absolutely. as an investment yeah, yeah okay um, what do you wish uh, to see more of in the space um, what do you wish people were doing more of um, I wish we saw an emphasis on uh, moving away from centralized systems that control identity. Uh -huh. So, um, and we have more people hold their own keys, and have a stronger emphasis on privacy. I think there's a very big risk when people leave uh, their cryptocurrencies on exchanges, and all of their interactions are through exchanges where they don't control their keys and. Everything they do is under surveillance mm -hmm. and tied to their identity. People yeah. need to take privacy more seriously, and they need to take custody of their keys um, to, to truly get the full range of benefits of this technology. You have to be in control of your keys, and you have to protect your privacy. Do you think uh, the masses, the majority of the people, are prepared or want to be fully responsible for their money? No. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, I think it's important that uh, some people do and some people won't. No, you can't make people take responsibility over their money. In fact, in many cases, people have the luxury to not care about those things because their bank isn't trying to rob them. Um, you know, that's why I like visiting Argentina is because people don't have the luxury of such delusions as to believe that their bank is a secure place to keep money um, because they've been robbed several times. In America, they have more um, delusions of security as to um, trusting banks and governments. But not everybody is ready for that. Not everybody is ready to take custody of keys. Not everybody is ready to um, deal with their own security or even to assert their privacy rights and maintain their own privacy. Um, that's okay too. We can teach people gradually, slowly, show the benefits of doing those things. Absolutely. I think most of the people are not even aware that there is a way out and yes. opt out. Excellent. Andreas, is there any message you want to spread to the Latino community? Something you want to share? People are watching at home. Something about education? Get educated? Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> In um, Spanish, maybe? You no. want to practice? No? No, I, I, I don't think so. so yeah. Um, I, so, yeah, um, all of my work is available for free online. Um, I make all of my work available under Creative Commons licenses, which are open licenses that allow people to read and share uh, my work, okay. and in many cases also modify it and use it in other circumstances like building courses and etc. <laughs> yep. And also translating the work. Okay. Um, I have a, a very big effort at the moment to translate as much as possible of my work into Spanish. Out of the um, 370 videos that I have on my YouTube channel, more than 120 have been translated with Spanish subtitles. There's a huge community effort to do that. Yes. Um, right. My book, Internet del Dinero, uh, Mastering Bitcoin, Mastering Bitcoin 2, and Mastering Ethereum, um, either have been translated into Spanish or are being translated into Spanish already. Okay. Um, Internet del Dinero is available. Okay. We're currently working on the second volume, Internet del Dinero 2. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and these are all volunteer efforts, so um, I appreciate the help anyone can offer to that. You can find more information on my website. Uh, and, we'll you can the, the yes, and you can support all of these activities by being a monthly subscriber on Patreon, which helps me invest in the staff to coordinate all of these activities to do translations. Excellent. I want to thank you from, from everybody that is watching. You are a huge inspiration and a huge. You are our mentor for everyone. Oh, thank you so much. I'm learning so much from you, and you, you, we never know what we can accomplish in two, five years. It's going to be amazing, and it was great to meet you. Thank you so much for your time.
Oh, thank you for having me here. I want to say that um, to me, coming to uh, Argentina has always been a source of great inspiration. Okay. And I use Argentina to fire me up mm. and empower me for the next year of my travels and to make me feel passionate yes. about these things because this is one of the places in the world where people really understand why this stuff is important. The same thing that I feel when I visit my home country in Greece yes. and also many other countries in South America. America, um, oh, but Latin America. yes, but Argentina is, is one of my favorite places in the world, Yay. and uh, I, I so enjoy being here. It's fired me up. Genial. Thank you, Andreas. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Ciao. <laughs>